Hello guys, welcome back. In this video, we are going to start building our GraphQL API server using Jenko and Graphene. Like I said earlier in our previous video, Graphene is one of the most popular GraphQL API library in Python for building GraphQL APIs. Although in the Django uh, framework, we have the Graphene Django, which is specifically for Django. Uh, and it is built on top of the Graphene framework or library, sorry. So before we go into setting up our development environment or writing any piece of code, let's look at the architectural use cases of GraphQL API. All right, GraphQL API server can be used in a number of ways. Our first use case or our first architectural use case is having our own backend database and building a GraphQL server on top of it that our clients or whichever clients that we have can actually communicate with that backend database just through our GraphQL server. All right, this is a common use case that we'll see randomly in almost all projects. But apart from this, we also have another use case in which our GraphQL API can talk to other third party service or microservice. In this case, our uh, uh, GraphQL API is acting as a gateway to other uh, microservice or third party APIs without having its own personal database but just consuming data from this third party service. This is a second use case. And, and thirdly, we can also use a, a GraphQL server with our own database that also communicates with a third party service like third party APIs or microservice. We'll be seeing this architecture use case in a future video sometime in this channel when we'll be building a software as a service. Then we will have to work with Stripe API, which is also a third party in that case, and uh, graphing to build our API and all that. So we'll be seeing that in future time sometime, sometime in this uh, channel. Um, keep that in mind. All right, enough of the slide, enough of the talking. Let's uh, set up our development environment. Let's install Django and install a uh, graphing Django and we'll start building our API. Heading over to our command line tool, I'm on Windows command prompt, so you can use any uh, command and prompt of your choice or uh, command line tool of your choice. So we are starting basically from scratch. I just have a simple folder called in YouTube tutorial. There is nothing in the folder yet. So first we're going to create our virtual environment. Then we're going to install the Django framework and the graphing Django. And mind you, for those of us that are beginner, this is um, for this to actually work, you need Python installed on your system. So just go online and download the latest version of Python. All right, so let's uh, create a virtual environment. That's simple to do. Alright, so you can give your virtual environment any name. Okay, we have our virtual environment up. So we can just activate, activate it. We can just navigate back to the root folder. Here we can install all our packages. So let's install Django and let's install a graph in Django. So next we install the graph in Django um, library. Alright, we have Graphene installed and Graphene Django installed. So now we can create our Django project. And then we can call our project, let's call it Graph Service or GraphQL Service. Alright, we have that project created. Open the folder in our favorite code editor. I'm using a Richard Studio code. So over to our project that we just created, we're going to add the Django Graphene to our installed app. In our settings of pi file, here we have the Django underscore graphing to install that. So we're going to save this. And secondly, we're going to head over to our project. That is our project URL. Here we're going to set up our single endpoints. That is the endpoints that we need for our Graph uh, QL API. Remember, Graph QL API works with a single endpoint. And the view that is going to handle this endpoint, we're going to import it from the uh, Graphene Django because the Graphene Django comes with a, a built-in view that will help us handle the single uh, API endpoint. 
So on the import here from graphene, we are going to import the. All right, and here we're going to create a simple part, which we're going to give our endpoint. You can call it any name. Call it GraphQL dash API slash. Then we're going to call the view that we imported. All right, and also the GraphQL and Dragon Graphene comes with a kind of a GUI. Um, interface for us to actually test and interact with our API. So for us to actually get that working, we need to set uh, a parameter inside this uh, as you, which is called the graph i ql. We're gonna set it equals to true. Once it's set equals to true, we have access to the uh, Graphical user interface for us to actually play around the API. We see that in the moment. So that's that. So once we say that equal to, we can get the interface. So these are simple and single endpoints that we'll be using all through our request. Okay, we are going to set the location to our schema in our settings.py file. We head over to our settings.py file. Here we are going to define where our schema is going to be located the graphing object or a dictionary object where we are going to set the, the schema in ca all caps letter and we're going to set it equal to our project what's the title of our project we called our project a graph that's the name of our project then we're going to say dot schema we are already defining where we are going to set up our schema, which we've not created a schema. We'll create that in a moment. You can use single quotes or you can use double quotes. So let's just use double quote or true since we've actually started with double quotes. All right, this actually tells a uh, jingle where our schema is going to be located. Though we've not created the schema yet, so we're going to define the schema very soon. But before that, let's create a simple app we have our project let's create an app as a jingle app so we'll head back to our terminal here where we have um, a graphql underscore service we are going to create this uh, since the python manage all right that will give us and um, that will create our app for us so if we head back to our code editor, you can see the question underscore API app. So let's also add this app to our installed app in our settings.py file. Alright, so we can save this. For first, to actually um, get our first API working, let's create a test database. That is a test model that we can use to actually test or create our first query. So we can just call this um, a name which we call it Chaffit. And let's add one more data to it. Let's say, um, I can say this also to Chaffit. There now. So once we, we are going to make migration, migration, all right, now we have our migration done, we can create a super user, so we can actually get some data into our database. So username we can just say test admin. Um, we can run our server so that we can create some sample data first in our test database. So let's quickly run our we run our server for us, then we can so here we can just put in our test. 
all right this week actually okay we forgot to add our test model to our admin.py file so in our admin.py file we're going to register this model as it registers so if we head back to our admin page and just refresh we can get our test and order so we can just add some sample data the data already which is okay so we can actually work with this uh, piece of data all right so we will start using our first uh, schema and also i uh, said the schema is like a blueprint that defines how our data should be fetched it's like a set of rules that define which and how the data should be fetched and how it should be modified all right so the idea about the schema dots and the schema module that we're going to create is more like um follow the same pattern like the, our core jingo url file here we have one in the base in our main project in folder and also in our various app we have their own schema file so that's the same concept so in our question um api app we're going to create a file i'm going to call it schema all right so this will be our app schema file we also create one in our project we'll do that soon uh, in our main project and uh, folder where we are going to make reference to this uh, app and uh, schema file uh, module so first we're going to import some few items we're going to import the graphing first as which is the graphing uh, library that was installed along with the graphic jingle so we install that then we're gonna for we're gonna import from graphing Django. We are gonna import the Django object type. Alright, the Django object type is a special type also that comes with the graphing Django that we can use to relate to our Django model. Okay. Then we need to import our model, right? So these are the three imports for now. So like we said, uh, we are going to define our own type now, our own object type that is going to represent the our uh, model. All right. So just like the way we have um, forms and model forms, which is used to map to our data model, we can also do same here. So we call this we call it class our own type. You can use any name of your choice. We want to create our object type for our uh, test model. So let me call this um, person person's type or person type because our model is about uh, persons and data like name age and all that so we can use any name to this which we're going to inherit the jingle object type so just like in our model form you can create you cannot create a class meta all right and we specify the model which is equal to our text model okay and that's that you can also specify the feed if you want to select some specific feed maybe you don't want all the feeds to be a an object type we can specify the feed also by your specifying feeds and then bringing and uh, sorry bringing each parameters that you want probably the id and so on and so forth but for this example we're going to just use all the feeds so once you don't specify the feed it's kind of you are actually making all the model feeds the person type all right these are our own custom type that we'll create and also we're going to create the special type which is the root type which is our query our query type this is going to inherit some graphing dot object type so we talked before about this query as a special root type this is a special root type that holds all the queries that we'll be making to this very server so any kind of query that we want to make from our own front end regarding a uh, data fashion this is the parent and object type that is going to hold all of them so it's a special root type called query for modification for changes or for inputting data there's also a special root type known as mutation we'll come to that later on but this is a special type that holds all the kind of um, query and this special uh, root type has a resolver function 
a resolver function is more like a an engine that actually processes the query that you are requesting from the server and determine the result should be returned that's what the resolver function does so for every query that is issued to the server the resolver and the resolver, a resolver function is what handles the uh, result so now first we can start to get maybe all the persons in our database maybe we want to get a list of all the person so we can define that query here we can call it any name let's call it persons we want to get persons that will be a graphing dot list so the list type is also an object type that defines a list of other objects on this list type we are going to define which type look at it it says parameter of type it's a list modifier a list is a kind of type marker a wrapper type which points to another type list often creates within the context of defining of if of the feed of an object type. So we need to define the object type that is that want to get the list of and that will be our persons type which we created so we are determining that we want to get the list of our persons type which we create so we can also define any other kind of type maybe we want to get a single person we can also do that let's say we want to get a we can call it let's say single also call our graphing dot feed because we are getting a single feed and this also requires the object type that we are referring to which is going to be a person's type and also an extra argument that we're going to query by the single person how do we want to get the single person is it by id is it by name or whichever uh, way that we're going to get it so we're going to bring down extra parameters we can define any parameters that is in your model if you want to query by an id or whatever parameters you want to query by let's say we we'll query by name because we have a name in our model feed and this name is a string type because in our model we have name so this is going to be a chart type which is going to be a string type in our uh, graphql type so we're going to say it's going to be a graphing dot string all right then this string type is going to be required so we're going to put in the required parameter because we want it to be required because without this you can't get the single object all right so this is how we define our different queries that we want you define a query to get a list of all the persons from our object type and it can be query to get maybe a single feed from our object type and so many kind of queries you can define different features and all all right so that's for the query and also you can create any different type of object type person's type depends on your models and all that and they should define queries so that so for each queries we define our resolver function like i said before i said the resolver function is what actually process the query and determine the result that should be returned remember our first query is expecting a list so what we determine the result is the resolver function we can define the resolver function for our person's feed by saying resolvers and info then keyword tags so this we just want to return a test model dot objects so that's what we want to resolve whenever a query is made to get all persons or persons okay for better and uh, readability we can just define it as all person all right that will be the name so when we go for query for all persons you return a list of all the persons in our test model okay that's for the resolver function so for us to also define the resolver function for single persons we can also do that self and it's taking info and it takes in the extra parameter which we call name here yeah. the parameter that we call name here yeah. all right so we're taking that also and that we're going to say we're going to put it in the try and accept bar in case the person does not exist for our code to break we should actually try and catch the session so we'll say try turn test model parameter all right so if that exists we return that accept 
the name does not exist except test model dot does not exist so if that is a case that doesn't exist we so that will prevent our code from crashing all right so this is how you define your reserver function so in maybe probably want to filter for a list of a particular set of persons that is the case you can pass in this extra parameter to a list object it doesn't really mean it must be a feed object you can pass an extra and uh, ax into the list object you can see that so right so that's for this uh, query so we'll be able to define our very first query our very first schema this is it it's very simple so once we save this is not all in our project and um, folder here yeah, in our project folder we create a schema file all right this is like pretty much like a, a schema file that we have in our app so we're going to also import the graphing library and then then we're going to import our own uh, schema so that's that then we're going to create a base query type here we are going to pass in our own custom uh, schema all right that was the first parameter then we're going to pass in the graphing dot object type and that's it and then we just pass because we don't want to put in anything here then we can now call our schema the graphing dot schema object uh what's the schema we are talking about is the query which is equivalent to the query class that we defined all right that's all we're gonna do in this uh, file uh, like i said earlier you can put everything in one file we can just bring in this uh, last uh, string and put it here but the reason why we you will need a base uh, schema file is when you have multiple schema or multiple apps we are working in a large application you have several apps that has their own independent schema they now have you can now have one base schema that manages all your schema for you let's say we have another application schema or maybe another app and they have, that app has its own schema we can just import the schema and add the query to this uh, class here so we can keep on adding more queries and schema from different app in this place so we can test our first graphql api but there's one thing we need to do for us to be able to test our graphql api so if we go to our yeah yes our url.py file because graphql queries are always post requests whether you are querying for data you are um, changing data all requests are post requests and we know the Django and uh, CRF protection we now allow you to make a post request except you provide you send the CRF token along with the post request and right now when you are actually building your app that CRF token can be sent along your request in the front end that if you want to do that but the easiest way is for us to actually exempt it so we're going to import from Django all right so we're going to wrap our view with the CFRF exempt so here we're going to call the you can actually send your CFRF token along with the header that will be probably when you are Building a very large application for security reasons, but for these uh, examples, we are going to exempt it first so that we can make a request. All right, that's for that, and then let's uh, run. Okay, our app is already running, so we can go to our browser. Uh, bring it here. All right, so let's visit this. Okay, we are getting some errors. Got an expected keyword argument require. All right, let me quickly check. I believe we have some errors. I was expecting some errors anyway. So let's check. Uh, I think I should be coming from our schema, not here. Uh, oh, sorry, the mistake we had is supposed to be required, not require. 
all right so it's a spelling error so we can actually save that and then head back to our browser and let's refresh okay you can see our graph iq uh, interface all right guys we've successfully um built our very first graphql api i guess you guys should be happy if this is your first time working with graphql you successfully built your first graphql api and this is where you can actually test our api so let's let's query for all persons i think that's all called it in a schema yeah let's query for all persons all right so we can just write our query and then what we want to query for what's query for all persons you can see it's giving us a, a hint for all persons and telling us the type and what we want to get the feeds we want to get you can specify the feed then here we can decide we want to get uh, let's want to get the id and let's want to get the name also you can see it's giving us an hint type name and it's giving us the type which is string and then uh, you can specify the exact data you want that's a beautiful thing about uh, GraphQL you don't have to get so if you test our uh, query now let's run to go can run you can see our data we are getting none I guess there's, a, there's an error somewhere it's not getting all the data that we expected all right the reason why we are having none was because of the naming convention remember we said that GraphQL is a type language and everything has to be done properly the name before we use a common case it does not allow common case it has to be if you are joining two kind of ways to form a variable name you have to put an underscore and all of them have to be in lower case earlier we were just having a uh, all persons and we are using camel case which is not supposed to be that's why we couldn't get an uh, all person so it has to be all lower case and if you are joining two ways you must join them with the underscore because once you do it like this GraphQL on its own we convert it to a camel case for us so our query will not be a camel case and joining without the underscore but when you are defining it you have to put in the underscore and all of them should be in lower case so that was the reason and also the reservoir function also goes along by saying reservoir underscore or uh, persons and the same thing reservoir underscore single persons like that and that's all so once we save that we refresh our browser and then we issue our query you can see we are getting our data for all persons it actually removed the underscore and camel case it is safe so that was the reason why we have that error and you can see our id our first person is john doe and also so if you want to get maybe the age of each person you can specify the age also in addition to it and then we run our query you can see the age for each person is being returned back all right so we are having our first api working you can query our data we can specify any data we want if we don't want the let's say we don't want the id we just want to leave the name and the and the age you can also query for that and you can see we are having the name and the age so that's why we say that uh, GraphQL enables declarative data fetching because we can easily specify the exact data that we need and we'll get it also we can get the occupation i think we have that feed all right so you can see it's giving us a hint okay so we can get the occupations for each person let's test a single uh, post a single person so we're going to just take this out and here we're going to get a single you can see it's giving us an hint single person query and this is expecting a name parameter you can see the hint is giving us a name parameter which is going to be a string all right so the name we want to query but let's query the by uh, John uh, John Doe name all right and the feed wants to get is want to get let's say we want to get the ID of the person I want to get the occupation of the person all right so that's that so we can test the query now 
you're also getting known I guess there's a mystic somewhere all right there was no error I misspelled I misspelled John that's why we are having none instead of John I went to inspect uh, something wrong and if you create it was giving us none which was right so if you enter the right name which is John do and send for the query and get our single and uh, instance of the person all right so it's working fine the single query is working and the multiple uh, getting a list of items actually so that's for that so this video is already getting long and this is a enough introduction to GraphQL I believe now you can see you can build a GraphQL API to an extent so in our next video we will continue our project properly see you guys in the next uh, video